are gathered together in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. And we also welcome those who are joining us in our live streaming in our morning Mass here in the Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word. Let us now pause for a moment as we acknowledge our sins, our sinfulness, our unworthiness, and ask for God's mercy and pardon so that we are worthy to receive Him in these sacred mysteries. Together we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Today we take the votive mass in honor of our blessed mother Mary. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the Mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that now at last you revive your concern for me. You were of course concerned about me, but lack an opportunity. Not that I say this because of need, for I have learned in whatever situation I find myself to be self-sufficient. I know indeed how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live in abundance, in every circumstances and in all things. I have learned the secret of, well, of being well fed and going hungry, in living abundance or of being in need. I have the strength for everything Though him who empowers me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. You Philippians indeed know that at the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, 
not a single church shared with me in account of giving and receiving except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me something for my needs, not only once, but more than once. It is not that I'm eager for a gift, rather, I am eager for the profit that occurs to your account. I have received full payment and I bound. I am very well supplied because of what I received from you through Epharodidus, the fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accordance with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delight in his command. His prosperity shall might upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affair with justice. He shall never be moved. The one shall be everlasting remembrance. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear. Lavish he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth, so that when it, it fails you, it fails, you will be welcome into eternal dwellings. The person is trustworthy in very small matters, is also trustworthy. In great ones and the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones if therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth who will trust you with the true wealth if you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another who will give you what is yours no servant can serve two master he will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The Pharisees who loved money heard all these things and sneered at him. And he said to them, You justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your heart. For what is of human esteem is an abomination in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, especially those also joining us in our live streaming Mass. When I was still a seminarian, one of our formators will always use the acronym HOT, H-O-T to remind us an important attitude of a seminarian that we need to always do in our seminary in our formation inside the seminary now being a formator here in Christ the King Mission Seminary 
I also use the acronym HOT, H-O-T, to remind our seminarians about this important attitude, important value that they need to develop in their seminary formation. To be always hot. The acronym HOT means honesty, openness, and trustworthy. In the seminary formation, we remind them to be honest always, to be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and to be open to their formators, and to be trustworthy in all the things being entrusted to them. My dear sisters and brothers, this is also the message of Jesus in our gospel today. As Christians, as disciples of the Lord, we need to imbibe this important attitude or value in our, in our life, to be hot always. As a disciple of Christ, we need to be always honest, to be open, and to be trustworthy. In the gospel, it started with the reminder of being trustworthy always in our life, na tayo magpagkakatiwalaan ng Diyos. Whether we are given small things or bigger things in life, we can be trusted by God. As Jesus said, the person who is trustworthy in, in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. We then reflect today, are we trustworthy stewards of God? In all the things that is happening now in our world, the pandemic situation we are facing, are we really trustworthy stewards of God on earth? Mapagkakatiwalaan ba tayo ng Diyos sa mga bagay-bagay na Kanyang nilikha? Do we really take care of whatever blessing God has entrusted to us in our life? Do we really use it for God's glory or for our own glory? Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, our wealth, our possession, or whatever you have in life are given to us by God because God trusted us to be faithful stewards. It is not our own. It has been entrusted to us by God. And so God expects us to use it wisely, responsibly, and even to share it. Binigay sa atin ang mga bagay-bagay na meron tayo sa buhay dahil pinagkakatiwalaan tayo ng Diyos. Alam niya na gagamitin natin ito ayon sa kanyang kalooban, hindi sa ating sariling kalooban or kagustuhan. Alam niya na gagamitin natin ito sa kabutihan. Alam niya na magiging responsable tayo sa mga bagay-bagay na meron tayo. Alam niya na meron tayo, marunong tayong ibahagi ito sa ating kapwa-tao. Whatever we have, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not only because of what we did or because of our own effort, but all of the things are given to us by God because He trusted us. Pinagkakatiwalaan tayo ng Diyos. And so let us be trustworthy children of God. Whatever God has bestowed us, little, or big things, many or few, or simple or complex, be trustworthy, stewards of God. Second, to be honest in our life. In the gospel, we are being challenged to answer honestly, truthfully, who is the master of our life? Is it God or mammon? Is it our worldly things, our career, or ambitions in life? You know, in this time of pandemic, it put us all to stop, to pause, and reflect. We are put hold because of this pandemic, and we are trying to reflect what is my priority in life. When he encountered Christ in his life, he turned down all his worth, earthly treasure, power, wealth, influence, etc., and follow Christ as his greatest treasure in life. As St. Paul says in the letter to the Philippians chapter 3, For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may, that I might Christ and found him. 
St. Paul put Christ as his first priority in life. It is no longer I who live in me, but Christ who lives in me. St. Paul was very honest in, his, in himself that his master is Christ. His top priority in life is Christ, and everything he considered is a rubbish, or everything follows. Christ is his master, and he was very honest to it. How about us? Are we honest in our life to whom we are serving and giving priority? Lastly, the gospel also reminds us to open our hearts to God. Remember, God knows what is inside our hearts. In the last part of the gospel, it says, You justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your heart. If God will look into our hearts, my dear brothers and sisters, what can He see in the depths of our heart? Is God pleasing to us because we are honest and trustworthy children of God? There's a famous description of a person that we always use. Lagi natin sinasabi kung mabait ang tao, sinasabi natin, he has a good heart. May mabuti siyang kalooban. We cannot see inside a person's heart, but because of what we observe in his attitude, in his character, it reflects what's inside the person's heart. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts to God. And in our openness to God, it radiates always in our attitude, in our character as children of God. It flows always in what we do in our life. Today, the gospel reminds us, are we hot disciples of the Lord? Are we always hot Christian, honest, open, and trustworthy? Or are we disciples who are cold, because we fail to respond faithfully and obediently to the demands of Christ of being a true disciple. Please rise. God entrusts us with gifts to be used for His glory and the good of other people. We pray that we may become responsible for all this and be worthy of His trust. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be committed in our ministry to the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that the government official may be responsible and honest in the use of government resources, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer, that we may be overcome by daily acts of generosity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer, that the poor and the sick may find support for the concerned and kind-hearted citizen, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer, that the dead may receive the eternal riches of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us pray for other intention. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us that we may not be carried away by the lure of money, but seek the real wealth of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
please rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we bring you, and grant that enlightened by the Holy Spirit and encouraged by the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our hearts may always seek out and treasure the things that are yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo a thankful hymn of praise, for truly even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look at the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy 
and the religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those we remember in our Mass today. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be chorus to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathered together as God's children, let us now pray to our loving Father in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ has said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace and the love of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. act of a spiritual communion my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation and of faith, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that we who devotedly honor the Blessed Virgin Mary may be worthy to share with her in the charity of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Horatio Imperata God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. 
We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray, pray for, for those, those afflicted. afflicted. May, may they be restored, restored to health soon. Protect those, those who care for them. them. Grant eternal, eternal rest to those who have died. Give, Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungso, pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Saint Joseph Benadimets, pray for us. Please be seated for some announcements. The Community of Christ the King Mission Seminary in Quezon City joyfully invites you to the online musical concert Harinawa, featuring our SVD College seminarians and special guests on November 20 and 21 at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. and on November 22 at 8 p.m in commemoration of the Solemnity of Christ the King of the Universe and the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis's encyclical letter Laudato Si, or On the Care of Creation. May we find hope during the coronavirus crisis through prayer and music. The concert will be aired through the following social me media pages. Pass Award TV Divine Word Media, Moments of Father Jerry Orbos, SVD, Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, St. Jude National Shrine, Manila, SVD Scholastics, Tagaytay, CKMS or Christ the King Mission Seminary, and cross-posted by the pages of our social media partners. This concert is dedicated to all of you, the people of God, especially to our benefactors, donors, alumni, and friends in the Philippines and abroad. Thank you very much. Truly yours, Father Louis Punsalan, SVD, Office of Alumni Affairs and External Relations, Christ the King Mission Seminary. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We bow our heads, we pray for God's blessing to the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with His blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joy and heavenly reward. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty and loving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and be faithful disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Mientras recorres la vida, tú nunca solo estás. Contigo por el camino, Santa María va. Ven con nosotros al caminar, 
Santa María, ven, ven con nosotros a caminar, Santa María, ven.